Welcome back. In our Sunrise Smart Start this morning, authorities in Colorado Springs, Colorado, have confirmed five people are dead and around 25 others injured after a deadly mass shooting at an LGBTQ plus nightclub there. They also say the 22-year-old suspect was ultimately stopped by two club customers and arrested by police within minutes of the rampage. New this morning on Sunrise, a Rochester-based company is working to reduce the education gap for those who are currently incarcerated. News 8's Shatira Marsh joins us in studio this morning to share the story of how this effort got started and how they are getting it done. Shatira, good morning. Good morning, Amel. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, 610,000 people are released from state and federal prisons each year, roughly 20,000 from the state of New York alone. CypherWorks is a company that provides education services and learning technology to a variety of industries, one of those being the corrections industry. CypherWorks is in partnership with Viapath, and their company uses technology to reintegrate incarcerated individuals back into society and reconnect loved ones. Tony Loudon, who is the vice president of reintegration in communities, shares his role is to look at ways of taking educational content to help men and women who are from incarceration and provide evidence-based practices on tablets to find ways to make the community safe as well as re-engaging families and loved ones. Loudon shares while, why this mission is important. We have an opportunity to be intentional with our technology to truly correct people so they can go home and be better. More importantly, to look at ways of it, take a holistic approach, um, helping men and women come home in our prisons to a, be better and make our community safer. The technology is used to connect children with parents who are incarcerated, allow those who are seeking an education to get a GED, practicing to learn soft skills and mental health practices as well. Amel, back to you. All right, Jatira, thank you. These services are free to join. If you're interested in learning more and getting your loved one involved, you can visit the website viapath.com. All right, let's check in now with meteorologist James Gilbert for a look at today's forecast. James, things are looking how they were looking this weekend, cold and windy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're trying to get a little bit more sun in there. We got a lot of sun yesterday. We'll have the same today. Uh, winds gusting though, 30 plus miles per hour at times, maybe even a 40 plus mile per hour wind gust. Live sky eye view, uh, not bad. Starting to see a little bit of clearing, but uh, we'll go partly cloudy in general. If we're trying to get out, maybe go to the playground. Um, tough to do when temperatures are so cold, but today, moderate. We'll go to 40 degrees, still below average for this time of year. We'll take a peek at uh, the rest of your work week, with, which is hopefully short as we head toward Thanksgiving on Thursday. And we'll have that at the end of the show. Amel? All right, James, thank you. Taking one last look at the roads this morning. Still same story out there. No accidents to report that I'm seeing. Everything is running on time, including 390, 490, and 590. We do have updates for you in every next half hour. So if anything changes, we will, of course, let you know. And an update now on the case against the suspect in the Buffalo Tops mass shooting. The accused shooter was expected to be in Erie County Court today to plead guilty for his role in carrying out the mass shooting in May. But court officials tell us that the suspect's appearance has been adjourned due to the weather. A new date has not been scheduled as of yet. An off-duty Vermont sheriff's deputy is recovering after he was involved in a shootout in Saratoga Springs. That's according to police. Commissioner of Public Safety James Montagnino says the incident started out as a verbal altercation that turned physical. It was between a group of people from Utica and the off-duty Vermont deputy. Saratoga police were not far from the scene, and once there, they say they told the deputy to put down his gun multiple times. They say he ignored Saratoga police. The police then fired at the deputy, according to officials. This was the first time in 26 years Saratoga police have discharged their weapon on the job, and that's according to our sister station in Albany. And back home now, Rochester police are investigating after a man was fatally shot early Saturday morning. Police tell us this happened at a home on Lochner Place, which is off of Portland Avenue around 3 in the morning. Once on scene, they say they found the man who was in his 30s suffering from a gunshot wound. He was pronounced dead at the scene. According to authorities, preliminary investigations show that an after-hours party may have occurred. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. 
The Gates Police Department collaborated with Mark's Pizzeria this weekend. The police department says they were passing out safety cards for kids, as well as tagging along with delivery drivers to do safety inspections of homes, giving tips to families on how to keep their property secure. This is their first time ever collaborating, and they say it is mutually beneficial to do such an event. It's kind of a, a, a win-win for everybody, so it's a good perk for, for us to be involved with such a great cause, and um, the customers get the safety check, and then um, it looks great with the police department helping out with everybody, too. I think it's a good interaction to, to have the kids come down here and be able to get their ID card and get some exposure and, and meet some of the police officers um, who are role models for them as well. The Gates Police Department is also preparing for their annual Santa Parade happening at the end of December. An update to a story we brought you last week. Some of the puppies rescued from a coyote den in the city of Rochester have contracted parvovirus. That's according to North Paw Rescue. They say two of the puppies were taken to the vet where they tested positive for parvo. Parvo is highly contagious among dogs and the rescue says it's running rampant in Rochester. They say they expect the rest of the puppies to test positive eventually since the virus is so contagious and treatment will cause Cost about three to five thousand dollars per puppy. North Paw Rescue is asking for the community's help to treat these puppies. Um, but we're not entertaining any adoptions right now because we don't know which puppies are actually going to make it, unfortunately. So right now we're really just seeking donations because this family, we saved them once and now we have to save them again. North Paw also urges everyone to make sure their dogs are vaccinated to help them with these high costs. We have a link to donate, among other ways to help, over on our website, rochesterfirst.com. Stop forecast here. It's going to be windy. It's cold, but we don't expect any snow. There you go. 20s to start. Feels like the teens. Uh, we'll get into the upper 30s to near 40 this afternoon. Short week for you. Hopefully, you just have to get to work today, tomorrow, and then we can enjoy what looks like a pretty decent holiday. We'll enjoy sunshine for Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday itself, Thanksgiving, looks good. Upper 40s to near 50. We've got our eyes on a potential storm system. Black Friday looks like Friday, and then Saturday uh, could be a little bit of a rain-snow mix. Doesn't look significant, but we'll keep our eyes on it as it could bring a little bit of wintry weather to the area. All right, James, thank you. And thank you so much for getting your day started with us here on News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is next. Have a great Monday, everyone. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.